According to the World Health Organization, around 300 million people around the world suffer from depression and studies show that 50% of all people who treat their depression end up relapsing at some point. This adds to the general ethos that once you're depressed, it's pretty much a hopeless situation and that mindset is part of why suicide rates are so high. Depression is like a leech that feeds on people's life force, depriving them of the energy to live life in a healthy manner or to even live life at all. And as a person that has dealt with depression, I wanted to make this video to show people that there's hope out there and that they can cure depression fairly quickly and without the use of medication. But don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with taking medication and it can actually help the process. Like with any disease, what is required is that you attack the problem at its root. Depression is a complex condition and no one really knows what causes it. Rather, it gets triggered in different people for different reasons, but some of the most common triggers are abuse, death in the family, certain medications, major life events, and genetics. In simple terms, depression is when stress lasts too long. Contrary to popular belief, stress is much more than just a mood. It's better described as a state of being. The stress response is calibrated based on the lifestyle of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. For them, stress required an immediate fight-or-flight response and usually involved fending off an attack from a hostile neighboring tribe, evading a predator, or quickly needing to find shelter due to an imminent storm. When we're stressed, the body releases powerful hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline which then trigger a host of other reactions such as the lungs increasing their intake of oxygen, the heart beating faster or stronger to send more nutrient rich blood throughout the body, and the immune system shifting into tissue repair mode to get ready for any injuries that might occur. The thing is, stress isn't meant to last longer than a few days because it can end up wreaking havoc on the body. In the hunter-gatherer era, intense physical activity usually occurred during every fight or flight encounter, therefore the body used that as a cue for when to shut off the stress response. But as you know, nowadays stress rarely ever involves real fight or flight situations, which means that when we get stressed, there's usually no cue as to when the body should stop deploying its protective measures. This is ultimately what causes chronic stress and depression. It's no secret that depression is a huge problem within society today, but a lot of people don't know that this is a relatively new phenomenon. There's always been depressed people, but the rate of depression has been rising for decades now and it's roughly 10 times higher than it was just two generations ago. Also, the number of people diagnosed with depression increases around 20% each year. The strange part is that the life expectancy and the quality of our lives have been increasing also, so how is it that people are more depressed now than they were before? Take these insights into account. The only known group in America that hasn't been hit with the modern depression epidemic is the Amish. In third world countries, the lifetime rate of depression is only a fraction of what it is in the West. For modern day hunter gatherer tribes like the Kaluli in New Guinea, studies show that mental illness is almost non-existent among such groups. And in countries like India that are moving towards a more Western lifestyle, they're experiencing an increase in depression rates. Based on these insights and many others, it's quite obvious that the more modern society's way of life is, the higher the rate of depression, and the reasoning is almost just as obvious. The human body was never designed for this post-industrial lifestyle. Until around 12,000 years ago, all humans were living life as hunter-gatherers and our genes are still calibrated according to that way of life. The most common treatment for depression is undoubtedly antidepressant medication with over 150 million prescriptions written each year in the US alone. This is a 400% increase since 1990. For a lot of people with depression, these are seen as the last line of defense, but how effective are they really? According to a 2004 study on the effectiveness of Lustral, Serexat, and Prozac, only about 23% of patients studied were depression-free after 6 months of taking the medication. This isn't unusual because most other studies on these medications also fall between 20 and 35%. Furthermore, according to another study, a large percentage of patients go off of their prescribed medication after just 8 weeks, usually due to side effects. The most common side effects are suicidal thoughts and behavior, emotional numbing, sexual dysfunction, weight gain, and insomnia. There's no doubt that these drugs can help people, but it's quite obvious that the general perception around their effectiveness has been skewed by pharmaceutical companies. But let's look at another treatment. In the early 1960s, a talented psychiatrist named Aaron Beck decided to challenge the Freudian orthodoxy by primarily focusing on stopping negative thought processes. He had his patients write down their thoughts and examine them with objective reasoning, and once they started to realize their negative perceptions were wrong, they were able to replace them with less biased thoughts. This form of treatment is called cognitive behavior therapy and it only takes 3-4 to four months to complete. 
CBT has actually proved to be more effective than medication with 30 to 40 percent of patients experiencing complete recovery and another 25 percent with substantial symptom reduction. With those stats, you would think it would be more popular given the fact that it's more effective than both medication and traditional psychotherapy, but despite its effectiveness, most patients have never tried or even heard about this method. There's no big marketing budget and it's more expensive than medication in the short term. Okay, so those two treatments are proven to work, albeit for a small percentage of people, and although they have their downsides, they're still better than shock therapy and traditional psychotherapy. But are those really the best options that we have? Luckily, the answer is no. There's one more treatment out there that isn't expensive, has no side effects, and actually attacks the problem at its root. This treatment is called therapeutic lifestyle change. TLC was created based on the findings that the hunter-gatherer lifestyle is profoundly antidepressant and can change the brain more powerfully than any medication. Hunter-gatherers naturally did things that kept them from being depressed, therefore if we weave those certain habits and activities into our daily lives, we'd be catering to the needs of our natural selves. I believe that changing our way of life is the only long-term way to get rid of depression once and for all. So if you're able to incorporate these six scientifically proven steps into your daily life despite the debilitating nature of depression, there's no doubt that you'll experience positive and life-changing effects. The first step to curing depression through therapeutic lifestyle change is to ingest more omega-3 fatty acids. The brain is 60% fat and fat molecules play an important role when it comes to the construction of the brain and the insulation of nerve fibers. Fortunately, the human body is able to create many of the fat molecules that the brain needs, but there's some that it can't produce naturally, so we have to obtain them through our diet. One of those molecules are omega-3 fatty acids, and they are found mainly in fish, wild game, nuts, seeds, and leafy vegetables. Our ancestors ate five times more omega-3 fatty acids than we do today, and our brain needs a steady supply of these molecules to function properly. People who don't eat enough have an increased risk for mental illness. It's recommended that we all take fish oil supplements to ensure that our brains function properly. Furthermore, a study by clinical researchers showed that when patients took an omega-3 fatty acid supplement with depression medication, 70% went on to recover versus only 25 recovery rates for those who only took the medication by itself. Number two is engaging activity. Depression is linked to a thought process called rumination, which is the habit of letting yourself go into a down spiral of negative thoughts. In some cases, deep thought is actually a good thing because it helps us figure out where we've gone wrong, but it becomes a problem when people start ruminating for long stretches of time. Chronic rumination increases the intensity of our negative mood, and sadly, depressed people spend literally all day in this state of mind. This starts to wreak havoc when you have lots of time on your hands, so to stop getting caught up in the negative thought process, you must spend your time doing something engaging. Instead of staying home all day thinking about stuff, try to catch up with an old friend or picking up a new hobby. Number three is physical exercise. Hunter-gatherers are in great shape and their daily lives compared to the routine of elite athletes, but modern life on the other hand is the opposite and most people are terribly out of shape. Researchers compared aerobic exercise and a depression medication called Lustral and found that patients who worked out did just as well as the patients who took the medication. They also found that patients on Lustral were three times more likely to become depressed again over a 10 month follow-up period. Exercise literally changes the brain because it increases the activity level of important brain chemicals such as serotonin and dopamine. Also, it increases the brain's production of a key growth hormone called BDNF and levels of this hormone plummet during depression which causes parts of the brain to shrink. This results in learning and memory impairment, but remarkably, exercise reverses that process. Therefore, exercise is literally medicine for the brain. Number 4 is Sunlight Exposure Millions of North Americans and Europeans get depressed during the dark and gloomy months of winter. This is a condition called seasonal affective disorder which is triggered by reduced light exposure. Without enough exposure to light, our natural body clock eventually gets out of sync and when that occurs it throws off circadian rhythms that regulate sleep, energy, appetite, and hormone levels. The disruption of these important biological rhythms can end up triggering depression. So to boost your mood and to prevent SAD, try to get at least half an hour of sunlight every day. Number 5 is social support. Anthropologists who study modern hunter-gatherer tribes notice one thing in common, they hardly ever spend time alone. Just about every activity, whether it's eating, playing, sleeping, or hunting, is always carried out in the company of close friends and family. Nowadays, not only do we spend less time connecting with friends and family, we're also less likely to connect with others at church, or a mosque, or Girl Scouts, or any other social gathering setting. Increasingly, we spend the majority of our time indoors using technology, and we even do our shopping online. The research is concrete. When it comes to depression, relationships are crucial. People who lack a supportive social network have an increased risk of becoming depressed and remaining depressed after an episode occurs. 
Number six is sleep. As I'm sure you know from your own experience, sleep and mood are closely intertwined. After just a few nights of bad sleep, most people start becoming noticeably cranky, and when sleeplessness continues for days at a time, it can interfere with their ability to think clearly. Bad sleep is one of the most common triggers of depression, and there's evidence that most episodes of mood disorders are preceded by at least a few weeks of lackluster sleep. This is a uniquely modern issue because hunter-gatherer sleep cycles are closely tied to the natural ebb and flow of darkness and daylight, and they usually sleep about 10 hours per night. Nowadays, we clock in around 6 to 7 hours per night, which is why 90% of Americans consume caffeine on a daily basis. Now I know that that might all sound like common sense, but don't let that discourage you, let it empower you, and let it symbolize just how close you are to curing your depression and having a normal life again. It's extremely evident that depression is really just our inner selves revolting against this modern life which is so beneficial to us as human beings, yet so detrimental at the same time. I by no means am trying to understate just how difficult it is to cure depression. I made this video to bring awareness and to showcase the best treatment options out there while also providing the concrete steps it takes to overcome depression. In my opinion, if your depression is extremely severe, I highly recommend that you take medication or do all of the treatments at the same time. So spread the word about this phenomenon by sharing this video, and without further ado, thanks for watching this video, and I'll catch you on the next one.